Four Nights of the Apocalypse Chapter 161 is out, and this was a really good setup chapter as we follow a bit more of what's going on with Tristan, and we get Team Percival showing back up in this chapter, and the full-on setup for the actual tournament is underway. Now, not a whole lot of big things happened in the chapter, but again, this was set up, and I actually really liked how things progressed in this chapter as it raises a bit more questions. But before we jump right into the chapter, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel and shows you want to see more. And if you want to support the channel more directly, go and become a patron on my Patreon. For just two bucks a month, you get access to my Patreon-only Discord server, early access to videos up to a week early that aren't chapter review videos, and other details where you can recommend me stuff to review, and I'm currently setting up stuff for potential live readings or watch parties on a bi-weekly basis once I get things figured out for that. You also get your name at the end of videos starting in September, and you, put, you can potentially get a shout out at the end of the video. I'm planning to make the patron and the Discord server as fun and as engaging as possible to make it worth your while. And also, if you want, go and use my referral link down below for Advanced GG and use my code GreekWeeb10 to get up to 15% off at checkout for some really nice supplements, shakers, and thermoses from Advanced GG. Really great flavors for focus, energy, and just straight up hydration, you will really enjoy it. Now with that out of the way, on with the video. So chapter 161 of Four Nights of the Apocalypse, titled A Strange Reunion, with the cover image being Tristan retrieving the dragon handle from a long dead Percival shortly after Percival abandoned and gave up on life, essentially, back before the time skip. So we cut to this vast open area from the previous chapter, as we go down a crevice, as Tristan begins to lead Isolde down a flight of rock stairs. As he talks about this flower, which is called a sapia flower, and, the o and it only grows on cliffs that he knows, asking how Isolde got it, as he uses his powers to heal her leg injury. As he goes on to say, taking all this risk, what if something happened to you? As Isolde apologizes to him with her saying, I just wanted to do something for you, which makes Tristan happy. As he says, are you afraid of me entering the Gladiator Festival? As he says, I'll be fine, Isolde. I promise I'll win and get you out of the cauldron, which does confirm that this area here is the cauldron. It's not necessarily a prison, but it's like a giant plot of land in Camelot, which is an interesting piece to really note so this does, does confirm that we are still in camelot and we are actually in the cauldron which is incredible to actually see what it looks like at the moment tristan goes on to say the winner earns any reward they want and they could even get medicine for his soul day's illness we hear a bunch of booming in the distance which are presumed to be fireworks signaling that the tournament is about to begin as he still says if it's with you anywhere is fine as she then begins to cough uncontrollably as she begins to fall down with Tristan grabbing her telling her if she's not feeling well to say something and for her to lay down right now leaving her in a bed over at the bottom of the cliff stating I'll be back soon with some good news too I hope as she is just staying in bed trying to get some sleep Tristan hears this strange noise as he's not sure what exactly it is because it's not fireworks and there's some shaking as he exits the crater now before we go off on this first off Tristan I'm calling him Tristan because that's his name but he goes by the name Tantris for some reason and we'll begin to think of what this actually means later on but right now him and Isolde if this truly is Ari Solde, which I don't think it is she's not as tall and her attitude attitude is definitely different so there have been theories that this is like a dream version of herself and perhaps Tristan that Isolde created while in Camelot perhaps subconsciously who knows it's very possible and perhaps Tristan's mind is being altered some way somehow and this version of Isolde has some sort of disease or illness that is giving her intense pain, pain and coughing fits which is very interesting to really note so yeah it, I want to see how they ended up in this situation because this is a very interesting situation that we're in with Tristan and Isolde, with them acting and being completely different people, essentially. Though Tristan's still the kind-hearted person that he is, so it makes a lot of sense. Moving back with the chapter, Tristan exits the crater as in a nice two-page spread, we see Gawain's flying boat house just pop out of nowhere through magic. 
as Tristan is in awe of the flying boat, with a nice panel of some people in the distance seeing the boat. As Gawain's grandmother states that they kind of stick out as a, like a sore's thumb here, and that they will hide and wait for their return. As Gawain says, see a grandma and grandpa, as her grandfather also says, take care and good luck. Gawain begins to float down and says, okay guys, way to set foot on the cauldron as Donnie is in awe of just how big and empty this place actually is. As Gawain begins to chant a spell, Tri Percival ends up noticing something on the ground. With the entire group, minus Percival, teleporting to the ground of the cauldron, Donnie shouts out for him to get down there, but he instantly leaps forward ahead of them, as they're wondering why he's landing over there as they realize something. He just leapt down to Tristan's location, meeting him face to face. As we get this really cool looking panel of Percival looking at Tristan, stating, Great to see you again, Tristan. You're probably still mad about back then, aren't you? As Tristan is just staring at Percival, as the rest of the group come running in at Tristan, all asking what's going on. Is that actually Tristan? Why'd you fall out of contact with us? Where's he soul day? Molly Otis and Elizabeth were worried about him. Nice to see him again. But Tristan's kind of dumbfounded and confused, asking them who they are. Donnie and Gawain think that it's a joke, as, yeah, of course you wouldn't recognize us. We did some growing over the last few years. And yeah, I would assume that as well. It's been a while since Tristan's seen any of them. And Percival's even like, come on, Tristan, you know me, it's Percival. But Tristan says, I'll have you know, my name is Tantris. I certainly don't have a name as stupid sounding as Tristan, which uh, kind of confuses and dumbfounds the entire group. And uh, I find it hilarious how Tristan, going by the name Tantris, thinks Tristan is a dumb name. I'm just gonna leave that there. I find this hilarious. The group huddles back and is wondering what's going on. How, why is he reacting like this? Is he having some weird sense of humor? But Percival's like, by the way, where can we find Chion and Isolde? As Aunt's like, right, that. Isolde is the only person who would ever understand Tristan's jokes. That is 100% true. As Tristan is wondering, wait, you know Isolde? Who are you guys? As they're trying to explain that they're all friends and that they know each other for a while. But Tristan says that's odd because I don't know any of you at all and Isolde doesn't have any friends or family. As everyone's wondering what's going on, Tristan picks up his bag and says, quit with the jokes already. I'm sorry, but I'm in a hurry. I don't know who you are, but if you're here to watch the Gladiator Festival, it's straight ahead. If you're joining in, though, that'll make us rivals. As Tristan goes off towards the Gladiator Arena, stating, Either way, I hope you find that Tristan as dumb as his name sounds. As he walks away from the group, with everybody dumbfounded by what just happened. As they're wondering what's going on and what his deal is. They're trying to run through possible scenarios, like this is Tristan's long lost twin. Ons magic didn't react to him. Ons wondering, but he looks just like Tristan. But Gawain confirms that's definitely Tristan. The Confident Eternal Darkness sword on his back is the same one that they gave him years, two years ago. As Perzel says, yeah. Plus, one look at his soul and his magic, and I can spot him a mile away. It's Tristan. So this is 100% Tristan, as we all kind of assume. But as we see Tristan walking towards the, are the arena, I presume based off this, Team Percival is just following him, with Tristan just trying to avoid them. As they're all talking, what's going on? What's his reason for acting like this? Is he under some sort of surveillance? We are enemy territory, we can't discount any theories yet. But they'll just follow him for now, as Tristan's like, what is up with these people? But yeah, he they're heading towards the festival, as we then do to see something coming out of the distance. As we head to this giant pillar of rock in the middle of the cauldron, as someone is stating, which I believe is Peldrup, how is our roster of participants looking, Capradonchi? With this new knight stating, we're seeing confident challengers gather from across the Lancer, as well as onlookers. The festival's a great way for the residents to blow off some steam, and it's also their only hope for escape. Those wishes will become another source of energy to build Camelot with. So that is interesting. That piece of dialogue makes it so that their wishes to become free, or to get their wishes granted, will just subconsciously be some sort of fuel to keep Camelot going and ever expanding. That is an interesting way, making, Cam making a Camelot and by extension, the power of chaos using Camelot as like a parasitic area to make dreams come true to keep it as stable as it is, as like an infinite source of energy. That's my whole theory of what this dialogue is going for. Or it is just some passing dialogue and it means absolutely nothing. 
But as we end up getting a collage of varying fighters, which I'm sure at least two, two or three of them will end up being some sort of important or relevant characters, the dialogue goes on to state. For it's those most willing to struggle their way to the top here that are truly worthy of joining our Chaos Knight ranks. Or you could say the warriors who will serve us in time. So this is also a recruiting ground to take these people and to convert them into Chaos Knights. Most likely getting the strongest among them to become Chaos Knights, which I'm pretty confident in seeing that that is a possibility. I really hope we get some really interesting characters for this tournament arc that can become later uh, enemies or rivals for the main four Knights of the Apocalypse. And we'll get to see some really cool fights. As we see Beltrup at his viewing platform as he laughs, stating, Well, let us enjoy this event then. As the knight beside him says, Absolutely, Lord Beltrop. As the chapter ends. So, really good chapter, very quick chapter. Team Percival finally reunited with Tristan, but it wasn't the way they expected it to, as it seems like Tristan, whether he knows it or not, has been altered in some way and doesn't remember his friends. Like we all stated, the possibility that Isolde ended up subconsciously created some sort of Camelot dream world, which has, has affected Tristan's mind, might be the case. And so he's becoming her perfect knight in shining armor, who is doing everything he can to help her get out of the cauldron. That is something very interesting. And also the fact that we see the cauldron just this wide open area where people are living, and the only way to get out is through this tournament. And Beltrup is setting this whole thing up, to just have a good time and find potential new people to join the Chaos Knights. The interactions with our main group and this and Tristan was also incredibly funny and I really enjoyed it. I cannot wait to see more interaction and I cannot wait to see the most likely rematch of Percival and Tristan, which I wouldn't be surprised if that ended up jogging Tristan's memories once they come back into play. I'm also expecting at some point familiar faces to be brought in. There is one Chaos Knight that I do want to, or at least one knight, in that collage towards the end of the chapter during that big monologue about all the participants. I would want, I, I would be curious based off of how the armor is set up, that knight that we see in that collage of challengers, maybe, that might be Rosebank. Because I think there's like a flower type or rose type emblem on the center of the armor. So maybe that's Rosebank and she'll make her return. Maybe she's in the cauldron for failing her mission. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. And who knows? Might get some other familiar faces from Seven Deadly Sins popping up. Heck, Cheon might end up being one of the participants in order to find a way to save Tristan or find Tristan. But either way, I'm really excited for this tournament. I really hope this ends up being incredibly hype. And we get some really cool fights and characters, and I'm excited to see where this arc is going to lead us for the future of the story. But, what do you guys think? How do you feel about this reunion between the characters, and how do you feel about Tristan's basic alteration of his memory? Leave your thoughts and opinions and theories in the comments section down below. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps, and it shows you want to see more videos, and shows you enjoy the content I make here on the channel and want to see more. And with all that said and done, I hope you all have an awesome day.